Hello viewers, it's Peter Earl got back again from Brentwood, Essex, England and today I'm going to talk about a subject which has caused a bit of trouble for me and my son and that is colour infrared photography. What, what was the trouble? Well, I had some film I was, I was selling and one of, was a, one of my spare rolls of colour infrared and some bloke bought it, it's a horrendous price, my son got a good price for it, then he complained that uh, the, the laboratory, so he said I paid £32 for it processed, which I nearly fainted, because I know there's a guy in South End, Essex, that does my E6 processing for £5. Anyway, he said I paid £32 for it, and the laboratory said it's been subjected to heat, and it's all melted, and he, he held it up, this strip of film, load of rubbish. I said, what's that? So anyway, I had another film. I, I said to my son, we won't sell that. I will do some experiments and see if I can get results. And this is the film. High speed, well, not high speed, it's Kodak Ectochrome Professional Infrared. Now, it admittedly, it's, it's out of date. And when we told the bloke it's out of date and been refrigerated, the date is, I think, um, yes, October 1998. Well, what happens with infrared film? You get false colours. And what was it used for? It was used for aerial reconnaissance. An aeroplane could fly over where some tanks were camouflaged and photographed on an infrared colour film. And the foliage would come out fairly normal, but the tank um, underneath the foliage would come out a totally different colour. They could see what it is. But it's a highly specialised film. And that's what the problem was. The bloke didn't understand. And I'll show you what the result was he got. And I know it's a processing fault in the laboratory. All that brown, that is unfixed and undeveloped emulsion. And, that's what, that, and it smells, oh, it smells like, I don't know, Jay's fluid. I've never smelled anything like it. I don't get that smell in my chemicals. But that is un, undeveloped and unfixed our emulsion on the film. So he sent it to us as a complaint. So anyway, I said, oh, well, I'll see what I can do. But we have to think very carefully how to handle this film. Right, we'll have a look at the instructions. Inside the instructions, it tells you, in the little box here. Oh, the instructions seem to be missing. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think they are somewhere. But it tells you you've got to handle it in complete darkness. You mustn't take the film out of the cassette in the daylight and put it into your camera because the film base for a star is not the normal acetate, it's an S star base. And it will fog. Then when you when you've loaded it into your camera, you must make certain the camera is one of the older type of cameras, like this for example, this is the one I used, my Pentax Spotmatic F, that is perfectly suitable for it, or you can use a Nikon, the old school Nikon, like that, or you can use the old school Olympus, like that, and the reason is, as you wind it on, the it's manual wind on, it's not automatic wind, it doesn't have an infrared sensor which counts the sprockets as some modern cameras do that, that will fold the film. And also in the instruction sheet, which has gone missing, sorry about that, it does say the laboratory has to have machinery which doesn't have infrared sensing otherwise it will fog the film so it's a processing laboratory fault 
So what do you do? You have to use, it says a Ratten 12 filter, which is a yellow. So I've got a yellow filter, I screwed it into my Pentax, 49mm, and then I also tried with an orange. Let's screw it in, 49mm filter, screw it in like this. So I load it within a changing bag. So you have to put your cassette in here and bring it across and get it and latch it in and wind it on once in the dark of a changing bag or a completely dark, dark room. So I did it in a changing bag in the lounge here. It's exactly the same. Put your yellow filter on and then it says 200 ASA if you're going to have it developed by E6. There is another process which it recommends. It's some process called AR, one that I've never heard of actually. AR, I've got to take my glasses off to see what it says. Process AR5. But it's also compatible with E6. So I thought, well, if that's compatible with E6, I could do a cross process in C41. Same temperature. If it doesn't melt in E6 at 100 Fahrenheit, it won't melt in C41 at 100 Fahrenheit. So I went out and took some pictures. I metered it for 200 ASA. And then I took some with that. And I took another, another shot with an orange filter just to see what happens. Now what is the reason for these yellow and orange filters? The reason is to cut out blue light which would cause uh, problems with the coloration of your film emulsion because blue light is extremely strong affecting photographic emulsions. That cuts it out. So that's what it, why you say use a yellow filter. So what do, we, what do we do? I went and took some pictures. I took about eight frames of film, and here it is. And I developed it in C41. And blow me, I've got some negatives. Now the film comes out all purple. I don't know if I can hold this up and show you. It's like Lomo purple, that Lomo stuff. I had I developed it for some girl. It's low mode film. It, it's that's what it's colour. It's the base colour, but you can see there's some images on it. My one didn't come out all brown and horrible and fault like that. My one came out with some images. Would you believe? Here's the, other, here's the longest strip. There we are. It's got a base colour which is purple. Well, I've scanned them. And I have then not done much in the regard of the scan because the colours are weird. But I have just increased the saturation a little bit. So let's see. First of all, we'll show you the result of my wife's flowers outside the door. That is the colour of her flowers taken with a digital camera and printed in my computer on some A5 paper. This is one taken on the infrared. Look at the colour. Colour. Look, the red is bright green. And on the, on the other side, on the left of the screen, the purple flowers are like a very pale whitish colour. But look at the red. It's gone completely yellow, completely green. Here, I've never seen anything like it. That is what you call false colour infrared. So how does it react with foliage. Well, the first one I took, I used a red, orange, no, I used a yellow filter, and that's that one. That was sunshine on some foliage, and the sky was a weird colour, but it hasn't printed, it's printed a bit light. So then I've done one with the orange filter, and one with a yellow filter. I think this one is what, what that's with the yellow filter. Now look at the colours on that. I'm going to call that Essex in 
the other dimension or parallel dimension of Essex in the parallel world or something. And this is the one I got with the orange filter. Totally different colour. Look at that. It's amazing, isn't it? Fantastic. But you've got to know how to handle this film. Otherwise it'll come out like that rubbish I showed you. Or <laughs> like this. Now that is a processing laboratory fault. It's not the it's not my Peter Elgar's film fault. So we can see we can see if we can put in a a thing to get some money back. We have, we have had to send him some money, but it's not my fault. The film is good. So you've got to learn how to handle this infrared stuff. Well, that's some of the results I got, folks, with the infamous ectochrome infrared film, well out of date, processed in C41 chemistry in Brentwood, Essex, England, and there we are. So. Oh, by the way, in the background there, when we're there, it, you can see today, that, that's happy birthday for me. <laughs> for my 85th birthday, I can't believe I'm, I was 85, can't believe it, I'm still going. Uh, I'm um, falling to bits gradually, but I see if I can switch this off now. Yes, thank you, and keep watching, when I'm well enough, I'll do something else. Bye-bye <laughs> for now, folks. Thank you very much.